Hello there. In this video, I will create a new EKS cluster, install Carpenter, and demonstrate how Carpenter works using a sample app. I'm using the AWS API authentication method for authorization, not the config auth. I'll be using Terraform for creating the EKS cluster and VPC, and uh, Carpenter will be installed using Helm charts. So here is my repo, and everything I discuss here in this video will be available in my repo, and also I will share the link to repo in my comment, comment section. So let's start with looking into the VPC. In VPC, for the private subnets, I have added an additional tag. So this particular tag, or either this one or some tag is required for the Carpenter to identify which subnet it should create the instances in. In my case, I will be creating instances in private subnet. So I have added a tag for this private subnet. This will be mentioned in the Carpenter configuration. Similarly, in EKS also, you need to create a tag for the security group that node should be using. In this case, I'm again using the same format and I'm also entering the name of the cluster. I like to use the name of the cluster because if you have multiple clusters in the same subnet, it is easier to distinguish between your network resources. Please note that I'm using authentication mode of API. When you're using authentication mode of API, you must create a access entry for your user. Carpenter controller require IAM authentication. I'm using IAM RSA, and you must make sure that you have the correct information updated here. So in my case, I'll be installing the Carpenter in the namespace called Carpenter, and I will be creating a service account called Carpenter Controller EKS demo. And then you create a IAM role with the policy attached, and also for the Carpenter node, I have to create a policy and I also have to create this access entry. This is the requirement specifically for using the AWS API authentication. I'm also creating a Carpenter node role. So I like to use my own specific role rather than the default one. And it does require some policies and I'm also attaching the standard policy that's required for any other node, node group. Now we are ready to create the EKS cluster. And by at the end of it, you will have a VPC, new EKS cluster, and the IAM roles required for the Carpenter to be installed and operated. We are ready to deploy now. And I have already done the initialization and also done the plan. So I'm going to go, go ahead and apply the plan. Okay, it's gonna take maybe five to 10 minutes and I'm gonna post my this video and I'll come back to get back to it once it's done. Okay, Terraform finished its job and uh, we have a new cluster and here is the new cluster endpoint. So let, let's move on to the next step that is basically configuring the your local Kubernetes client. So kubeconfig, so it's a command, updated. So let's have a look at the cluster info so if we can connect to it. So we we'll use the cluster info to establish whether we can verify we can connect. So we are able to connect. Let's see what we can see in the console. So if you go into the console, we already have a cluster ready. And uh, looking into the compute section, you will see a single node, desired size is single. If you go into the access tab, this is what interesting here. So here we have a role and a system node. And this is created because of the new API authentication. This is required for Carpenter to spin up a new nodes. If this is not here, then you will not be able to, the Carpenter will not be able to spin up new nodes. So we are able to connect to the cluster. I'm copying the API endpoint because this is required for your next step that is configuring the Carpenter controller. So this is Carpenter controller and here I update the API endpoint. If your endpoint is not correct, you will have problems. Number one, it may not even install the Carpenter controller. And also you may have issues where your nodes are provisioned, but they are not able to join the cluster. Uh, not that many values you need to pass for the controller, and I'm putting the service account name. This must match the service account you have defined. And also the annotation for mapping your service account. I updated the cluster endpoint, and the next step is to install the Carpenter controller. So I'll just copy this command. I'm already in the right folder. I'm already in the folder with EKS Carpenter, and uh, I can see this. Carpenter app folder is here. I'm in using the Helm install to install the Carpenter controller and also 
using the custom values which I already saved. So Helm install and in this top menu, you can see the number of ports being spun up for the Carpenter. So you can see now we have completed the installation of Carpenter controller. By default, Carpenter will try to deploy two ports. And in my case, I only have single node. So the second port cannot be deployed. So that's perfectly fine for testing. Now that the Carpenter is installed, the next step is to configure the Carpenter with the right node pool and EC2 node class. So if you go into the Carpenter node pool.yaml file, here you'll see I'm deploying a Carpenter, configuring a Carpenter node pool and the name is Carpenter default. And here there are some requirements. In this case, I'm deploying only AMD64. Carpenter can also support ARM Graviton processor. And uh, I'll be deploying only Linux type and I'll be using Spot instances as well as on demand. Carpenter will always try to deploy Spot instances where possible. So the instance class can be anything from C, M, or R, and also the instance generation must be greater than two. I'm also setting some limits on number of CPUs and memory that Carpenter can totally provision. So once in total number of CPU reaches 20 or memory total memory allocation reaches 50 gigs, and Carpenter will stop allocating new nodes. Then we move on to EC2 node class. Here we specify the details of the node which we, we are provisioning. In this example, I'm using Amazon Linux 2 and also doing a 25 GB disk, GP3 volume, and specifying the role that I'll be using. This I've created already in the, using Terraform code. In the subnet selector section, we specify the tag, which is it should match what we already specified when you were creating the VPC subnet, and also the security group. For the security group, we need to specify the tag for that same. And also the name tag, this will be the name what you will see in the console when the Carpenter creations a new node. So we are ready to apply this configuration. It's a YAML file, so you can directly go ahead and apply it. So I'll go and apply. So it's created both, both resources and let's have a look, quick look. Okay, both the resources are ready. So now we are ready to test Carpenter. In the sample folder, I provide a application and that is how CPU requirement that is more than what we have at the moment. So uh, it's a CPU requirement of half CPU and I'm asking for four replicas. Whenever Carp the uh, Kubernetes try to deploy any application and if it runs out of resources and Carpenter will trigger creation of a new nodes. So when we go to the, we'll do. so let's go ahead and apply the, this configuration. And also at the same time, let me tail the logs of Carpenter. So here I'm tailing the logs, wrap it around, and I will apply the Carpenter scaling. Okay, applied. If I look at the node ports, Carpenter, as you can see, Carpenter already detected that and is provisioning a new node. And here you can see the Carpenter testing that ports are pending deployment. If you look at the description, you will see insufficient CPU. So that has already triggered Carpenter, create, Carpenter to create a new node. Okay, within a few seconds, the new node is available. It's getting ready. It's so quick, the deployment is very quick and you can see all the port is initializing, containers creating. So now all the ports are being created and now while waiting for it, let's go and have a look at the EC2 instances. So if you go to the EC2, running instances, you can see there is a new node called Carpenter Provisions. So that's it, we have a working Carpenter solution. And let's go ahead and remove the application and see what happens. So when you remove the application, Carpenter will automatically detect that, okay, it's not using, needing any more resources and it will also terminate the node. So here we can see it is terminating all the testing nodes. It's already gone and it's only a matter of time before the Carpenter detects that the node is not required. That's it from me and uh, hope you find it useful. Thank you.